Let me ask you almost for fun. So this is not Oriel as, 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 a, as a deep mind person or anything to do with deep mind or Google, just as a human being. And looking at these news of a Google engineer who claimed uh, that, uh, I guess the Lambda language model was sentient or had the, and I, I still need to look the, into the details of this, but sort of making an official report and the claim that he believes there's evidence that this system is, uh, has achieved sentience. And I think this is a really interesting case on a human level, on a psychological level, on a uh, technical machine learning level of how language models transform our world and also just philosophical level of the role of AI systems in um, in a human world. So what what did you, what do you find interesting What's your take on all of this as an as a machine learning engineer and a researcher and, and also as a human being? Yeah, I mean, a few reactions, um, quite a few actually. Have you ever briefly thought, is this thing sentient? Right, so never, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely Like never. even with like Alpha Star, wait a minute, what? No, uh, sadly, no, I think, yeah, sadly, I, I have not. Um, yeah, I think, I think the current, any of the current models, although very useful and very good, um, yeah, I think we're quite far from that. Um, and there's kind of a converse side story. So one of one of the my passions is about science in general, and I think I feel I'm a bit of a like a failed scientist. That's why I came to machine learning because you always feel and you start seeing this that machine learning is maybe the science that can help other sciences, as we've seen, right? Like you. You know, it's a, such a powerful tool. Um, so thanks to that angle, right? That, okay, I love science. I love, I mean, I love astronomy. I love biology, but I'm not an expert. And I decided, well, the thing I can do better at is computers. But having, especially with, when I was a bit more involved in AlphaFold, learning a bit about proteins and about biology and about life, um, the complexity, it, it feels like, it really is like, I mean, if you start looking at, the things that are going on um, at, at you know at the atomic level, um, and and also I mean there's there's obviously that we are maybe inclined to try to think of neural networks as like the brain, but the complexity is and the amount of magic that it feels when I mean I don't I'm not an expert, so it naturally feels more magic. But looking at biological systems as opposed to these computer computational brains just makes me like, wow, there's, there's such level of complexity difference still, right? Like orders of magnitude complexity that, um, sure, these weights, I mean, we train them and they, they do nice things, but they're not at the level of biological entities, brains, cells. It just feels like it's just not possible to achieve the same level of complexity behavior. And but the, my belief when I talk to other beings is certainly shaped by this amazement of biology that maybe because I know too much, I don't have about machine learning, but I certainly feel it's very far fetched and far in the future to be calling um, or to be thinking, well, this, this, this mathematical function that is differentiable is, is, um, is in fact sentient and so on. Well, there's something on that point. That it's, it's very interesting. So you know enough about machines and enough about biology to know that there's many orders of magnitude of difference and complexity. But you know how machine learning works. So the interesting question for human beings that are interacting with a system that don't know about the underlying complexity. And I've seen people, and probably including myself, that have fallen in love with things that are quite simple. Yeah, so. And, and so maybe the complexity is one part of the picture, but maybe that's not a necessary um that's not a necessary condition for sentience for um perception uh or emulation of sentience right so i mean i guess the other side of this is that's how i feel personally i mean you asked me about the yes. person right um now it's very interesting to see how other humans feel about things right this is this we are like um again like i'm i'm not as amazed about 
things that I feel are, this is not as magical as this other thing because of maybe, yeah, how I got to learn about it and how I see the curve a bit more smooth because I, you know, like just seen the progress of language models since Shannon in the 50s and actually looking at that time scale, we're not that fast progress, right? I mean, it, it, what, what, what we were thinking at the time, like almost 100 years ago, is not that dissimilar to what we're doing now. But at the same time, yeah, obviously others, my experience, right, the, the personal experience, I think no one should, um, you know, I think no one should 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 tell others how they should feel. I mean, the, the feelings are very personal, right? So how others might feel about the models and so on, that's one part of the story that is important to understand for me personally as a researcher. And then when I maybe disagree or I don't understand or see that, yeah, maybe this this is not something I think right now is reasonable, knowing all that I know, one of the other things and perhaps partly why it's great to be talking to you and reaching out to the world about machine learning is, hey, let's make, let's demystify a bit the magic and try to see a bit more of the math and the fact that literally to create these models, if we had the, so the right software, it would be 10 lines of code um, and then just a dump of the internet. So versus like then the complexity of like the creation of humans um, from from their inception, right? And also the complexity of evolution of the whole universe to where we are, um, that is feels orders of magnitude more complex and fascinating to me. So I think, yeah, maybe part of the only thing I'm I'm thinking about trying to tell you is yeah, I I think explaining a bit of the magic. There is a bit of magic. It's good to be in love, obviously, with what you do at work, and I'm I'm certainly fascinated and surprised quite a, quite often as well. But I think, hopefully, as experts in biology, hopefully will tell me this is not as magic. And I'm happy to learn that um, through through interactions with the larger community, we can also have a certain level of education that in practice also will matter. Because, I mean, one question is how you feel about this. But then the other, very important, is you starting to interact with this in products and so on. Um, it's good to understand a bit what's going on, what's not going on. Um, what's safe, what's not safe, and so on, right? Otherwise, um, the technology will not be used properly for good, which is obviously the goal of all of us, I hope.